Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Prem Suryakumar, I'm a knowledge broker at Concordia University. And uh, thank you for joining us for this pre-live broadcast conversation with Scalinetti and Jason Lewis, co-director of ABTEC, Aboriginal Territories and Cyberspace. And we're going to talk about their virtual vernissage reformatted from ABTEC Island in Second Life. Wegwe, Skanagoa, Skawanari Yujats. I'm an artist. I'm co-director with this guy of Aboriginal Territories and Cyberspace. I'm Jason Lewis. I'm a professor at Concordia University in the Design and Computation Arts Department, and uh, I'm an artist as well. And Skawanade and I have been running Aboriginal Territories and Cyberspace together since uh, about 2005. Can you tell us just a quick description of what Aboriginal uh, Territories and Cyberspace is? We, Aboriginal Territories and Cyberspace came out of a sort of a long-running series of conversations we had been having about how indigenous people and communities were and were not at the time using digital media. We've both been working in digital media as artists, as technology developers, and we found that there weren't many other indigenous people who were kind of actively involved working with these new technologies, new at the time. And we wanted to create a, a context to, to go and find those people, to invite them in, to uh, work with them to build capacity within the indigenous community to work with digital media. So we uh, we got our first grant in 2005 and we invited a bunch of people, uh, uh, indigenous and non-indigenous people, to come and have a series of conversations with us about what sort of work might, um, you know, might help us get towards that goal of increasing capacity within the indigenous community for working with digital and network media. Um, and then from that, a number of different projects have flowed over the last 15 years. Okay, great. Uh, so we're here to talk about this virtual exhibition reformatted. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, uh, well, the, the backstory to the exhibition is that I was creating a machinima, a movie in this virtual space, and I needed a set. The set was going to be a gallery in the future. So we chose the museum of the Montreal Musée de Beaux-Arts, and uh, the show inside the museum uh, was called 21st Century Indigenous Art and or early 21st Century Indigenous Art. Are we in the 21st century now? Yes, we are. <laughs> and uh, so I, um, you know, found this, we built this beautiful gallery, my team and I, and, you know, we needed artworks in it. And I happen to know a lot of early 21st century Indigenous artists. And so I asked them if they would lend me digital representations of their works so that uh, there would be an, you know, a beautiful but also significant uh, backdrop or uh, backdrop is actually too light a word, an important set, an important environment for the, um, the story to take place in. So the, these amazing people answered my call. I'm gonna try and name them all without forgetting anyone. Do you have a list here? <laughs> I, have, I, I even, I think I might know them in alphabetical order. Sunny Asu, mm -hmm. Scott Benesina Bandon, Richard Bell, Rebecca Belmore, Jason Lewis, Hannah Claus, Nadia Mir, Maria Huffield, David Garneau, Peter Morin, and yes, that was it. Um, Hannah Claus's work was especially interesting because I, um, well, I, in fact, in a, I mean, this was ages ago now, it was 13 years ago, so I can't fully exactly remember how that idea all came together, but I did know that Hannah, Hannah had asked us if we knew a 3D modeler that could help her to sketch in a 3D modeling program her sculptures, her beautiful, the, she makes these beautiful uh, kind of hanging sculptures at this time. This one's called Cloudscape. So you can imagine these beautiful cloud-like sculptures in this 3D space. So I knew she, she had made this digital version and I thought, oh my God, there, is there a way that we can import that into Second Life? And you know, maybe you don't know, but Second Life is very finicky. It's not like, oh yeah, anything in this digital format can go into that digital format, not at all. But our amazing producer, Nancy Townsend, she can find, she can make almost anything happen. If she says it can't happen, I, it can't, then it can't happen. <laughs> anyway, she was able to do it. After that, I, um, I also uh, worked with the other artists to find images that I felt 
looked really good in Second Life. And I don't, what I mean by looked good is fit the look of that world. Actually, in thinking about, you know, so in thinking about the show today, that what's opening today, I looked, I worked with them to find works that I thought would fit very well with the look of this virtual world, Second Life. And we did that. And I thought it was great. Shot the movie, it was great went on to do great things <laughs> went you know and i you know the movie went on to to uh be more anyway the movie went on i was very happy with the interest that it got that's what i'm trying to say without bragging <laughs> um but you know we never treated it like a real exhibition we never treated it like uh we never had a vernissage we never you know the the folks all those folks just gave us the work out of the generosity of their hearts you know out of the belief in the cause <laughs> the cause of scalinati's artwork <laughs> um and so uh when covid19 happened and we start to see all these galleries going online we were like wait a second we are we are ready for this. We are so ready. We've been waiting for seven years for this. We, don't, we just didn't realize it. And so we contacted the artists and we said, hey, we never had a vernissage for this show. We never paid you. <laughs> Would you like it if we did that? <laughs> We'd like to have a vernissage. We'd like to promote it, you know, and all of them responded super enthusiastically. I was super happy. Um, also added in one of my works because over the years I continued making things for that space I continued making movies and so there's this one artwork that I made that I you know we for fun we put it in the gallery and so for this show we're like well it's in there let's leave it in there uh, and so yeah we have this show and the reason why we called it reformatted is not only were these artworks none of them were developed for Second Life uh, you know, the only, you know, and some of them were digital, like Hannah's and uh, Scott Benesine Abandons, but, you know, none of them were meant to be in that space. And so they had to be reformatted, their paintings, their beadwork, their phot photographs of beadwork. Um, and so we did that, but we also feel like life is being reformatted right now. And so we thought uh, that's why we chose that name. And the whole, gal the whole gallery is being reformatted to be this sort of, from a work of fiction to- From a set. To an actual exhibition. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things we need to get to is can you get more details about Second Life in the terms of why you chose that as a virtual platform? Can you describe us what the environment is like, the, the, pr the key principles of interaction in it? Certainly. So Second Life is, uh, I think the official thing you call it is a massively multiplayer online 3D world. And so the way you interact in Second Life is you must have an avatar. Uh, so, and so you have a body, you have this physical or would you say physical? You have this digital virtual body. Uh, you can have default bodies that look like human beings that most of them do. But you can be anything, of course. Anyway, a lot of people are robots, um, animals, swimming fish. Yep. Uh, and other things as well. You could be, uh, you know, you could be in hyper, a hyper-realistic shade of blue if you want to be. But um, for the most part, people walk around in humanoid bodies. And uh, you, you can walk around, you can run, you can fly, you can touch things by clicking on, on them. And sometimes they do things. You can touch on, in, in our gallery, when, in our vernissage, if you touch on a champagne bottle, a champagne flute filled with champagne will appear in your hand and it will attach an animation to you without you even having to do anything it will make it appear like you are drinking the champagne <laughs> so those are some of the ways you can teleport yes you can telepathically send you know you can send messages to people you can talk to people now that that wasn't there when i first started you can actually just have voice chat on like we're talking right now the reason I chose Second Life was because of that, this amazing customizability. I mean, all the stuff that I just described to you, I found amazing in 2004 when I, when I first entered that world. Um, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I thought it was amazing. Uh, I thought 
it was like doll play, but like kind of better than Barbie because, you know, you didn't have to take her head off to put the clothes on. <laughs> oh, also, you know, she could like the dolls can stand now, they can walk and fly. Uh, so I thought, uh, and then when I learned that you could build sets and make movies, it just was like the perfect medium for the stories I wanted to tell. And also the way Second Life works is it's free, you know, it's free to enter into it. Um, and you can travel all over the place and so forth, and you can customize your avatar. Uh, but if you want to own, if you want to have space that's yours, then you have to, you have to buy it and then like lease it on a continual basis. So after the, a couple of years of her working with her team in Second Life and building things, but then sort of having to find places to build them and then having to kind of take them down and like kind of keep doing that, we finally decided to just go ahead and take the plunge and buy an island. Um, and so that's when we bought Aptech Island so that we had control over that space. We could build whatever we wanted to build, leave it in space, leave it in place, and also control who can come, uh, who can come onto the island. Because one of the, one of the things that happened in the early stages before we learned how to lock everything down properly is that we actually got vandalized uh, by people coming onto the island and sort of wrecking things basically. Um, and we've also had one crazy incident where the, there's a limited number of like sort of what they call prims that you can use like on your island and then you're like, oh, you can't build anything more. It's basically memory. Yeah. It's another way of determining memory. And they kept bumping up against this problem where they're running out of memory and they were like, why are we running out of memory? We don't have that much stuff. And then finally one of our research assistants decided, was testing out a jet pack because you can have jet packs. Um, and put the jetpack on and just like, like went up into the sky and kept going and kept Higher going and kept going and kept going, and kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. And she got up there and she realized somebody had built like a whole city up there. Like they had come in. We didn't know how to set the, 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 the rights correctly, the permissions. protection, the permissions. And so they'd been up there for like weeks or months building this fantastic city in the sky. I have to tell them one part of what it was. It yeah. was like, there. it was like Hansel and Gretel's witch's house. It was like a candy house. It was beautiful, lollipop fence. It was amazing. But inside it was super creepy. Yeah, it was super creepy. <laughs> These people were really talented actually. And they were so talented that we actually tried to get them to work for us. <laughs> but anyways, so, um, so yeah, so there was a lot of kind of just learning how to work with the space, but it's proven to be a really productive space for Scott Winata and her team building I don't know how many different sets from how many different eras over the course of Time Traveler TM, and then also the two big machinimas you've done since then, were, um, She Falls for Ages and The Peacemaker Returns. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the big question is, how do we get on the guest list to get into the exhibition? Okay. You just mentioned the island is, yeah. you know, so, so we want to know how to get there. Yeah, so actually anybody can come now, anyone. It's open 24 seven and anyone can come unless you have vandalized us and then you're banned. But basically all are welcome, you know, no matter what, no matter what shape, size, color you are, or age. Um, we have instructions written out in a number of places now. Abtech.land is our webpage where they're, where they're written and also on our Facebook event page. So if you look up reformatted, I'm pretty sure you'll find it there. And also abtech.land is A-B-T-E-C dot L-A-N-D. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you very quickly, you know, and also I want to just say Second Life does not pay me for all the promotion I do for them. <laughs> <laughs> you go to secondlife.com and you get an account. Once you filled in your name and show, you've chosen the, the name, you've chosen your, um, oh my God, I can't Second remember. Life name, your, your avatar name. Your, your avatar's name, yeah. Uh, you, you are, you, and a password. You then go to the next place, which is where you choose your, your first avatar. And it will be a default avatar, so you might look like a lot of other noobs at first, but you go ahead and you get that, you choose that avatar on the web page. Now, armed with your account and your chosen avatar, you download the software. When you download the software, you then, you then uh, type in your name and password, and there you will appear in your brand new default avatar. You will be somewhere in the world, I don't know where, and you will type in to the search bar, Abtech, and you will find us. You will then teleport to us, and 
then you're gonna then we'll take care of you once you're there we will show you where the champagne is we'll show you where the art is we'll tell you how to fix your hair yeah so a, a, a chunk of our crew will be in world uh helping people figure out what to do and what to look at and how to drink their champagne and things like that so um, but you're not forced to drink champagne but it you is, don't have to drink champagne it is non-alcoholic yes <laughs> Okay. Uh, one last question. I think uh, what you guys are doing, it's part of the larger thing as we're physically uh, distancing ourselves, you're creating spaces to be able to meet and connect. And, but you've been doing this work for some time uh, where you needed a space to, that was your own to connect and bring people together. And I'm just curious if you could conclude by reflecting on, you know, your experiment and your project, where will it go from this current situation of physical distancing and beyond? Well, I would like to talk about the fact that uh, since, since I've been a bit disappointed, people have not been showing up and using the spaces. And, um, and so we've tried a lot of experiments for the last three years, I think, uh, we've already been doing activating AdTech Island. And that's a weekly time slot in which people, um, Again, our team are there in world just to greet people, just to uh, if you know give them a tour, just to say hi on the very basic level, but also to show them how to use Second Life or show you know show them whatever they can in that space in that time, um, and um, and we built a little program to track how many people are coming. So sorry again, not a lot of people show up. One or two people would show up per week during that period of time during that weekly two hour slot. Um, but then we, then one of our brilliant assistants uh, wrote a little program to track how many people were coming throughout the week. And we found that it was way more people were coming than we thought there'd be like, well, 10 or 20 people a week. Okay. Sometimes on a good week, more than that. And then recently, um, Second Life came to notice us finally. And we were put on the uh, chosen destination list. What was the, there's a real, anyway, that's the special uh, recommended destinations, I think it is called on Second Life's main website. So we didn't know they had done this. And that week, the little program told us that 250 people had shown up. And we were like, what? How did that happen? Tell so, me, yeah, tell them, you can go in the back. <laughs> Since then, uh, since then, after we've now we're not on the main page anymore, but we the numbers have been really elevated. But also because of this happening, uh, the, you know, Second Life, like I said, they know that we exist now, and I'm in conversation with a couple of people there, and it, they're telling us how it's insane the interest that people have in Second Life again because of COVID nineteen, and so I think that. Like I said, maybe we're, you know, we were just lying in wait, <laughs> you know, we're just preparing the ground for our, our friends to come and, and it's been prepared now. And so I'm hoping that maybe that will, the thing will really happen now, the community space I envisioned. And I think, I mean, it's also a part of like just experimentation because, you know, to figure out what kind of online spaces are good for what kinds of activities. Um, so I think at this point, you know, month two months into this thing people are getting zoomed out that it's uh that it's it's very useful for a number of things but spending like particularly long periods of time um doing video chat is sort of good for some things but not really great for other things and so thinking about the all kinds of different cybernetic cyberspatial places that we might inhabit and how to best use them you know and as artists and as people who um, you know, we try to support uh, our fellow artists, indigenous artists in particular, you know, thinking about how can artists continue to get their work out into the public and get it to where it's seen, that's really necessary. Like we, we need a, you know, for people to sustain practices, they need a public of some sort or another. Um, plus, you know, lots of artists, not all of them, but lots of artists want their work to be seen uh, by the public. So thinking about like, how do we go about doing that, that's not not just putting some images up on a web page and trying to make it feel like that's an exhibition. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So the summary is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Log into Second Life 
uh, and then in the search bar, put Abtec, A-B-T-E-C. Yes.